Good evening and welcome to this week's Invest Africa. I'm Alicia Second. Well, despite the national controversy about the size of Lagos's population, it's regarded as the 18th largest city in the world with a population of 10.58 million people. It's also considered one of the fastest growing cities of the world. And tonight, we analyze Lagos as an investment destination. We look at the city's future positioning in the world context as well. In the last decade and a half, Lagos has transformed itself from an infrastructure infamous decaying metropolis to a modern functional city and joining me at the desk to take a closer look at the city's growth and investment potential is Yvonne Mungo. She's a Renaissance Capital Sub-Saharan Economist and joining the debate from our Lagos Bureau is Ben Akubweze who's Lagos State Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget. So let's get straight into conversation, Yvonne, with you, because today over half the world's population are urban dwellers, generating in some cases up to 80% of a country's national production and income. Now, Lagos is one of Africa's three mega cities. So where does Lagos stand in relation to that in terms of urban development and how it's contributing to Nigeria's national GDP? Lagos State is a significant part of the Nigerian economy. We actually did an analysis of the state economies in May, whereby using, uh, by reviewing the internally generated uh, revenues of uh, the states as well as consumption data, we estimated that Lagos State, uh, is, um, the, economy, the size of the economy is around $32 billion. So it makes up around 12% of the national GDP in that country. As you know, it's, it's also the most populous state of around, as you put, 11 million uh, people living the state. It's the smallest state in terms of size as well, so it makes it quite heavily congested. It's also the wealthiest if you look at per capita income. Uh, we estimate it's around $2,900 per capita in Lagos, which makes it an exciting opportunity, particularly for consumer uh, good companies uh, looking for um, a sizable market. So in terms of its importance, it's significant. And just to add one more point, as you're probably aware, Nigeria is in the process of rebasing its GDP. Mm -hmm. We estimate that the upside's around 40%. And that would imply that Lagos State post rebasing could be a $45 billion economy, putting it on par with uh, the economy of that of Ghana. That means that that potential, Ben, is pretty stark. So let's explore more of that. What are some of the growth targets that have been pegged for the city moving forward? Well, um, basically, I, I think that um, some of those numbers about the size of Lagos, the population and the economy are actually way below the numbers that we, um, you know, we have in, in, you know, in terms, and I just, you know, might start with uh, just uh, maybe correcting those. In terms of population, there are close to 22 million residents in Lagos at the moment, and uh, this is something that um, has been uh, validated in 2006 we counted 17.5 million people and based on our projections and, and you know last year for instance um, you know children age 0 to 5 you know immunized 4.3 million you know children immunized um, you know if, if, if you know people who are best in you know demographics of these parts will tell you that children in that age range would typically represent about 20% of the population. So if you extrapolate, you have about 21.5 uh, million. So we're satisfied that the numbers that we, we, you know, we're using at Lagos Bureau of Statistics in terms of the uh, residents of Lagos are uh, accurate. The Lagos Bureau of Statistics also, um, you know, in terms of its own computation, independent computation of the GDP of Lagos, Okay, the number for you know that we did in 2011, and we're updating those numbers now uh, using primary you know data, updated data was uh, a little over 80 billion um, you know US dollars, and I just thought I should uh, make those um, mm -hmm. clarifications. Of course, these may be at variance with some of the numbers that um, you know you're aware of, and in terms of um, you know the the growth rate of this economy. The truth is, for Nigeria as a whole to be growing at about 7%, Lagos of a necessity has to be growing at over 10%. Okay? And based on uh, data you know, available between ourselves and the World Bank tracking between 2004 and 2010 in terms of household um, you know, expenditure, 
uh, you know, um, levels in, in, in Lagos. It will indicate an average growth rate in that time frame of about 13 percent, you know, per annum. Okay, so that's uh, what we're looking at. And of course, there are vast discrepancies when it comes to these figures. I mean, uh, everyone seems to have a different figure on the table. That, according to the Lagos uh, Bureau of Statistics. To what extent, though, Yvonne, is lack of development and focus on urbanization, setting up infrastructure supportive of growth and productivity, impeding some of that growth potential that we could potentially be looking at? I think that's one of the biggest challenges mm -hmm. is that as um, um, the gentleman just put forward is that you've got a very fast growing economy in Lagos State. Um, he's estimating around 10% rural growth. And one of the big challenges we have, and this is not just peculiar to Lagos, Nigeria, mm -hmm. but to uh, a regional issue in Sub-Saharan Africa, is that the economies are growing faster than the rate of investment. And uh, one of the, um, the subsequent impacts of that is the fact that you don't have enough infrastructure stock um, for the population and power is probably the one um, sector within infrastructure that's most uh, affected. Mm -hmm. So the challenge that Lagos State has, despite all the opportunities from a fast-growing young population offering a labor force, is supplying uh, or delivering services and infrastructure at a rate fast enough to sustain that growth rate going forward. Ben, so take us through some of the blueprints that you've got on the table right now, because uh, as Yvonne's highlighted, you've got an economy that's growing faster than its investment is growing right now. What's being done at this stage in order to uh, foster greater economic growth in the, in the future? I mean, Eco Atlantic has been one of the territories that has uh, really stood in the spotlight. Well, I mean, you know, one um, is absolutely, you know, uh, spot on in terms of, you know, the challenge that we face here. And, um, you know, for us in Lagos, that, that's made particularly, you know, difficult because we're coming from a background of a significant deficit from the you know very early early 80s when the end of you know civilian administration to the return of civilian administration at the turn of the century for about two decades there was hardly any investment in the infrastructure of the city even as the population grew you know massively and so in 2007 when you know, we, 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 we determined to ramp up the rate of infrastructure development in the state. We did a 10-year infrastructure development uh, program, and we estimated what level of investment was required over a 10-year period to basically address the gap and, and build infrastructure that, you know, would reasonably support the, you know, So the what population. did you come up with, Ben? I mean, what with, level of investment do we, we, we need came to up, see? We, we, we came up with a tab of $50 billion as what was needed over a 10-year period. But you see, when you look at the state's budget, the largest annual budget we've had for the state is $3.2 billion. And you can't spend all of that on infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it became clear to us that, you know, I mean, you know, one of the things that became clear to us was we needed private you know, uh, you know, sector involvement in, in delivering infrastructure, uh, you know, for you know the state, and over the five year, five years, you know, halfway into this ten year, we've only been able to we estimate uh, the aggregate investment between the government and private sector in the infrastructure is in the order of about fifteen billion, you know, dollars. Uh, you know, so we're lagging, you know, behind, uh, you know, on that. And uh, we, we face infrastructure deficits across, you know, across board, in, you know, in, uh, you know everywhere. And, and yeah. um, we think that uh, this is probably one of the most profitable investment opportunities for anyone uh, to consider on the continent. We'll be taking a closer look at uh, the financing needs, the funding needs to, uh, to, you know, to support the growth and development of the city in just a bit. Before we do, why are we sitting with this infrastructural problem in your books, Ben? Has it been a case of underestimating the growth, uh, that, uh, you know, the growth levels, or is it simple bad planning? Well... <laughs> I think it's just, uh, you know, whatever, I mean, it, it can attribute it to all of the facts that you have pointed out and more, you know, including bad politics and, and, and all of that. But the bottom line is those who had responsibility for running the street just dropped the ball on that, 
Yeah. And, um, well, let's get we'll, to you know, pick it up and yeah. Let's get Yvonne's uh, view because Ben just finishing off there saying that they've picked up this ball now. How are you rating effective implementation? Because you've got to ask the question. We, it's one thing having blueprints on the table, mm -hmm. another thing actually seeing it through and uh, seeing that follow through. I think one of the most promising things, and I'll talk nationally now in terms of Nigeria and rather than just Lagos State, is the power sector reforms that we've seen mm -hmm. already starting to take place. So the divestment of the generation and distribution companies that are coming to conclusion later this year. That's an excellent step forward in terms of trying to deliver infrastructure. As we know, power um, is probably the biggest, out of all the other um, infrastructure sectors, the most significant is power. 40% of the requirement for infrastructure on the continent is in the power sector. And as long as we see progression down that line, which we've, st we've seen under this administration, I think we're moving a big step forward in terms of delivering um, the, some of the uh, services and infrastructure that's required in the case of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So yes, it may not have been as fast as we would have liked, but I think during this particular uh, administration under President Jonathan, we have seen a big step forward. Okay, so you've highlighted uh, the power generation side of things as one element that we've got to focus on. I touched on Eco Atlantic in Victoria Island. I mean, that's been labeled a commercial area. How close an eye have you been keeping on that development? Because it uh, speaks to the kind of urbanization we're seeing and the kind of development we're seeing happen in Lagos State. Um, that's probably a big um, area. I'll speak urbanization generally because mm -hmm. I haven't been focusing specifically on eco-Atlantic. But if we look at the um, deficit in terms of the, on the property side or residential, commercial development, I think one of the big issues retailers have going into Nigeria is the lack of um, availability on that side. So the fact that you are seeing um, the, develop, uh, the, the authorities seeking to meet that demand, particularly on the real estate side, mm -hmm. is very promising because there are a lot of investors sitting on the sidelines w wanting to go into Nigeria, but they'd like to see, um, amongst other infrastructure, the real estate side taking, taking off in the case of Nigeria.